Chapter 12. Another Fine Mess The wall between our kitchen and the living room was not thick and we could hear murmuring voices. Well, Kat said Dad. Well, Ted. He quoted a line from his film favourites, Lauren and Hardy. Another fine mess. Kat started crying more and didn't seem able to stop. Dad put his hand on her shoulder, but this was not a good idea because he made her cry louder. Through her sobbing noises, I tried to hear what the voices from the living room were saying. I heard odd words, Salem, no, never. It was always Aunt Gloria's voice. I deduced that this was because A, she was nearer the kitchen and B, she spoke more loudly than either Mum or the inspector. Then I made a whole sentence. This was because Aunt Gloria shouted out like a thunderclap. Salem would never run away from me. I put my hands over my ears. I felt air pushing itself against my face. My mouth open and closed. Hmm, I said. Dad opened the door to our back garden. It was early evening outside. He motioned for Kat and me to go out with him, but Kat shook her head, so I went out with Dad on my own. We walked down the path towards the garden shed, past our line of washing, which flapped in the breeze. Light southwesterly. Dad, I said. Yes, Ted. What's the probability that Salem has run away? Dad gave a scrunched up look. I hardly blame him if he had. Then he shook his head as if he didn't mean what he just said. I don't know, Ted. I think it's more probable he's lost somewhere trying to get back. 60-40? Sorry. 60% probability he's lost, 40 that he's run away. Maybe 70-30? I don't know. That's why hasn't he... Then, then why hasn't he used his phone? Maybe he's run out of credit. Then why isn't he answering our calls? Maybe he's run out of charge. Dad looked up at the three-quarter moon that was rising to the east of the city. I know, a lot of maybes. He sighed. Salem and your Aunt Gloria have a strange relationship. Ted. For all that she nags him and he backchats her, I think they are close. Close? Like weather gets close? No, close like near, close to each other. That's why I wouldn't have thought he'd run away. Not in a strange city. Not without having anywhere to go. I remember Salem's joke fit because he didn't want to go to the art gallery. I remembered him stamping his foot when Aunt Gloria tried to suggest leaving the eye until later. I'm good at counting things and timing things and remembering things, but I find it hard to know whether people like each other or not. I have a basic five-point code for reading people's faces, which Mr. Shepherd has taught me from cartoon pictures. 1. Lips up. Loads of teeth showing. Equals very amused. Happy. 2. Lips up. No teeth showing. Equals slightly amused. Pleased. 3. Lips pressed together, slightly turned down, equals not amused, slightly crossed, or else puzzled. Hard to tell which. 4. Lips pressed together, eyes scrunched up at the same time, equals very displeased, angry. 5. Lips ran like an O, and eyes wide open, equals startled, surprised. I thought about Salim and the way his eyes shifted around the ground, a lot, and how he'd looked up towards the sky when Aunt Gloria was talking. But it didn't fit into the five-point code. I didn't know what emotion it matched. I thought of him in the queue to get on the eye, squinting upwards, looking down, turning this way and that. I thought of him shuffling in his sleeping bag, sighing in his sleep. Recognising the five basic emotions is one thing. Knowing how they're mixed together is another thing. It is like knowing about secondary colours as well as primary colours. Blue and yellow are easy, paint colours to recognise, but it isn't easy to predict, predict that if you mix them together, you get green. So, if they are close, I said to Dad, that means Salim wants to be near Aunt Gloria, always and wouldn't run away. Not necessarily near always, but there again. Dad ran a hand through his hair so he looked like Stan Laurel. We don't know your Aunt Gloria that well, or Salim. It's been five years since we saw them last. The arm of a shirt sleeve on the line flapped on into Dad's face and got tangled around his neck. He laughed, which seems a strange thing to do when you are in the middle of a crisis. He peeled the sleeve out of his way. Maybe they are close, like the weather, Ted. Combustible. Who knows? All I know, it. it's another fine mess.